May you find happiness and peace. And may your home stand the test of time. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be reacting to another video from Ben Sapiro. Today's video is titled Socially Tells Ben Sapiro's Worker Should Own the Means of Production. So without further ado, let's get started. So let's say you own a pencil factory, I'm a worker in that pencil factory. You can have all the machinery, all, you can buy all the raw materials you want, but without me and presumably many others like me to assemble the pencils, all you would have is a pile of wood, yellow paint, graphite, rubber, and aluminum. Okay. That would be worth it. So, and that is worth less than the pencil when you try and sell it. And yet all of that value added by labor apart from the wages that you give me, which if we're being honest, there is a major power imbalance in our ability to negotiate that. Well, if, if, all you, if all that putting the pencil together requires is basic use of your prefrontal cortex, then yes, your labor is alienable at lower rates than if you are a doctor. That's not the fault of the person who owns the machinery. But if, all, but, if the, but if you didn't have workers like me and your pencil factory and you were just one man. But I do, so I have millions of people who are willing to do that voluntarily for me. If you're just one person trying to ass like assemble pencils, you're not going to get very far. You need workers. Capital needs labor infinitely more than labor needs capital. That's why you have worker cooperatives where the workers I are I fundamentally the disagree on the distinction between capital and labor. Capital is just a term for money. If you're talking about money, money does not grow from the ground. Money only has value because it was traded for labor at one point or the products of labor. That's so true. if I take my money and I buy machinery, I have invested my labor in doing that because I didn't get the money from nowhere. Even if I got it from my parents, my parents didn't get the money from nowhere. The people who built the machines required me to trade something of value to them in order for me to obtain the machines. The people who invented the machines required people to pay them in order to get the, the patent to that machine so they could build the machine. The, the, the problem that I'm seeing in, in what you're saying is you have still failed. If, if what you're talking about is a system of voluntarism, you still have not named any area in which we disagree, and yet you're telling me that you're a socialist and I'm a free marketer. So one of us has got this wildly wrong, and I'm pretty sure it's not me. <laughs> The differentiation I draw, and I'm not alone in this, I'm not one person trying to redefine anything, the differentiation I and many others like me draw between socialism and capitalism is that under capitalism, when you as the owner of the factory, you give me a wage. The wage could be $7.25, it could be $15, it could be whatever an hour, right? right? But you, you give me a wage, all, all the additional profit above the, uh, made from selling the pencils or whatever good you produce above what is reinvested into the company ultimately goes to you or the investors, the, uh, it, those who own shares in the means of production. Right. Under socialism, those people are the workers. And the example I give, again, is cooperative enterprise. No, those are the people who are investing the risk. So if they carry the risk, then they get the benefit. The owner of the factory carries the risk, therefore he gets the benefit. The workers in the company you mentioned, if that company were to go bankrupt, they would carry the risk as well as the benefit. If the company goes bankrupt, and this guy has to pay off all of his debts, the worker may lose his job, but he's not the one who's going to incur the debt of having gone bankrupt. If you incur risk, then you are the one who pays the downside. The worker does not pay the downside. Okay, it is the investor who pays the downside, who invested in all the machinery, who sunk millions of dollars into making your labor productive. Because guess what? Your labor is without that machinery. Gunk, nothing. You don't have a pencil to put together, you don't got the wood, you don't got the, you don't got the paint, you don't got the rubber, you don't got the metal, you got nothing. Right? You're sitting there, standing outside, twiddling your thumbs. It required somebody to invest, mil who do you think put more in? The guy who spent millions of dollars buying all the machinery, leasing the place, making sure there was a management structure, doing the LLC formation, making sure all the tax code was in compliance, or you standing outside because you can stick a piece of graphite into a piece of wood. <laughs> now we're done. Wow, I, I love this, you know, Ben Shapiro, he's a man that don't, you know, he's not like sweet quotes in his word. He will let you know the way he he he's thinking about it and i think that is why i love him you know because you don't expect me to take all the risk you know bring my equipment and everything and then at the end of the day you should detect how much i pay you you know there are a whole lot of people at home waiting to have that job so if you if, if you feel like they are, you have been cheated then why don't you go back home and sit or you can use whatever um money you have to start up something for yourself i think people who think like this are people who haven't you know invested a whole lot you know if 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 you know what it takes you to go to school you know graduate from this from your from school you know spend like almost seven to ten years in you know in university learning different things become a master in your craft become a professor you won't be thinking like this well if if you are out there coming to work for someone you know you're bringing your skills and everything and the person you're working for have invested a whole lot you know a whole millions of dollars he or she would have used to enjoy, you know, go to a beautiful place, enjoy their, li their life, you know, 
some of them even don't need to work till they die but they are there to put in you know help other people you know start up structures that will fetch people money because if the pencil industry is not there i don't think the person making this statement is going to have anything doing you might have the skill but no one to employ you i've seen people millions of people graduating from 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 different institutions every year some of them don't have anything to do for the past or maybe for the next 10 years for the next five years they don't have anywhere anybody to employ them and now you're getting someone that that is willing to employ you give you something every month as your you know wages but still i feel like this is great okay as far as he's employing you he's giving you he's, he's paying for your service i don't think you should complain that is the truth you don't need to complain you just need to save up enough money to start up something for yourself if you feel like he's underpaying you you can save up enough money start up something for yourself and see how you run things because you know the risk involved in owning a business is is, is very very massive if that business you failed you are you will just you know leave the business go to somewhere else find employment and keep on doing your pencil assembling but that man have lost a whole lot of money maybe if people decide to invest in the business he have lost a whole lot of investment i mean investors money a whole lot of his money and he, he has to start again from the beginning so if if he's paying you this particular amount of money you just need to save up and do something for yourself you don't need to be greedy and feel like why is he paying you this except maybe you're an investor okay i can't invest in a business and keep on receiving peanuts we need to talk about agreements okay this is what is happening this and this and this is what ha business is supposed to be run i can't invest and you pay me whatever you want to pay me we have to negotiate i have to bring my lawyer and we have to sign contracts okay at the end of the month this is what i'm supposed to get for investing my money because i'm i'm taking risk for the business that is it and, and i feel like you come in as an, an employer he's before you start working the company is going to tell you this amount of money we're going to pay you for the work you're rendering to us so if you don't like it you can decide not to take the job and they will look for someone else that will appreciate the, the money and, 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 and pay the person. So I, I don't like, I feel this is this is greediness. I feel, I feel this is seriously this is greediness, okay? Because someone is willing to pay you to do a certain job. So don't act greedy because you feel like if you are not there, the business won't go forward. If you are not there, a million different people are out there willing to take a job. So the best thing is keep quiet and do your job. If you don't like it, you quit and go home. That is that is that is my take on this, guys. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section. If it's your first time visiting the channel, click on the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and remain blessed.